Hi besties, welcome back to my channel, or hi my name is Stacy. if you're new here. So for today's video, we're doing a Douyin inspired Valentine's Day look, and I actually love how everything turned out. So I'm gonna show you guys how I got this look on my face, and it's literally like probably one of the cutest looks I've done in a while, so definitely keep watching. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, because it really helps out my channel, and it would really mean a lot to me. And let's just get right into the video. Okay, so I already did my base because like there's nothing special going on today. I just used the House Labs foundation and this Hourglass concealer. These have been my go-to recently. And yeah, I also did my brows because again, nothing special. I use the Unleashia brow pencil and also the Unleashia brow fixer and everything is linked down in the description as usual. I didn't want to waste time on that since that's like not part of the tutorial. So today, since we are going for the Valentine's themed look, like everything is going to be pink. So I wanted to use this Mood eyeshadow palette. This is the Lilac Moment palette, but you can see it's literally so gorgeous. It's just like a bunch of these really pretty lilac pink shades. But I'm mostly going to use like the top row because I don't really want to go into the purple realm. You can get this mood palette on YesStyle and I'll link everything down below and use my discount code StacyChen99 if you want to save some money. So I'm going to go into this pink shade called Love Poem. We're just going to use that as an all-over base color and kind of set the eye at the same time. But yeah, you don't have to use this palette. Just use any like light pink palette. But I actually found that it's kind of hard to find actual light pink palettes. Like ones that don't lean too peachy or lavender. And are also like light enough and not too like muted. So anyways, I'm also just putting this on the bottom lash line. You kind of want to just like put it all over. Also my base is unset right now because I don't want to set it until after I use my blush. That's why I look very like shiny. So I just really packed that pink on. And then I'm going to go into this shade called Rosy Haze. So it's like a little bit deeper. And I'm just going to put that in the outer corner just to add some definition and also on the bottom lash line and honestly it's not a super like accurate placement you just kind of put it all over your eyeball okay and then to make this a little bit more exciting i'm actually going to take the brighter blush i'm going to be using later so this is the new ColourPop heart blush in the shade hot to touch and this is perfect for valentine's day so i'm just taking a tiny bit of that and putting that on the outer corner as well mostly in the outer half so this is always just a great tip in general that you can use your blush color like on the outer parts of your eyeshadow and that will just make it blend with your blush because later when we do the blush it'll kind of just like mesh together and now we're going to do the cut crease half cut creases are super popular on douyin or xiaohongshu which is like chinese tiktok and pinterest i feel like they're bringing the cut crease back so i'm taking this nars soft matte concealer and this is in the shade chantilly it's like the lightest one i have and then taking this like flat angled brush and i'm just using that to draw a line so this part is actually like not as hard as it seems. I don't know, I've only done a cut crease like twice in my life. You want it to be above your actual crease so that when your eyes are open like you can see it because you can see it is above my actual crease but you don't want it to be like too high. But there's kind of like a natural indent right there so that's kind of where I'm doing it. But yeah you want to map that to like match with your eye and then you go like halfway to like above where my pupil is so that's like the half cut crease and then you literally just draw the concealer all over that part like the outline is the hardest part because now you just fill it in also this is like a layman's cut crease okay because as i said before i'm nowhere near an expert in cut creases i've only done like this is probably my third cut crease in my life i feel like they've been turning out pretty okay for me and yeah i actually really like this nars soft matte concealer for this because i feel like it's just really easy to control because it's not a liquid, so since it's already like a drier consistency, I feel like it's not too hard to like use, you know what I mean? Versus a liquid, I feel like it's easy to use too much. You don't want to pass the halfway point too much, because you want to keep this like color on the outside. Like once you get to the middle, you kind of want to just like start fading it out. But it kind of like blends by itself, I don't know, you know what I mean? I think it's because of the consistency of this concealer. Yeah, like I'm very pleased. I feel like this just makes it so much easier than like a regular cut crease. I don't know. Yeah, like look at that. Like, that was pretty easy to do, no? Okay, before we add any glitter, I do want to go back in and kind of redefine that line. So I'm just taking the pink shade I used earlier, and you want to just kind of like put it right above where you use the concealer to kind of darken that area. And it just like increases the shadow, like it increases the contrast, you know, between this part and the concealed part. So yeah, I feel like this is like a minor step, but it's actually kind of important. You want to increase the contrast. See how like that just made it pop so much more? Okay, now for the fun part, we have some glitter. This is actually one of my favorite glitters of all time. Like I always come back to this one, even though I have like 10,000 individual glitters, you guys know me. This is the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Liner in the shade Grind. This is like the pinky tone shade. I have these in a couple shades. But yeah, this pinky one is my favorite, I think. And since we are doing a Valentine's Day look, we have to go with the pink. I'm just gonna follow where I put the concealer line, you know? And this brush tip makes it really easy to do like a little liner situation. Because it is so thin too. <gasps> like, is that not 
the cutest thing you've ever seen. But yeah, then I'll like go over it a few times just to like really make it pop. It is a little bit messy there, but it's gonna get fixed because I'm gonna add some more glitter. Now, a lot of the Douyin tutorials, I feel like they actually just leave the whole eye matte except for the glitter cut crease. But for me, like I need a little more glitter than that. So we're not gonna stop there. So I'm gonna go into this glitter shade in the Mood Palette. This is such a pretty like rose quartz kind of glitter shade. It's called Angel Beads. And it's just like a pretty like cool tone pink. And I'm just gonna start patting that on the cut crease. So for this part, it doesn't really matter like what kind of glitter you use, but you do just want it to be like a lighter shade. Like definitely not a smoky shade because you wanna keep the brightness of that cut crease, you know? I also like not having it matte because I feel like it just like blends in with the cut crease better. It's just a lot less stark when you have a glitter on your eye and in the crease. But like, look how pretty! Like not me stunning myself. So I actually think I want to increase some of the contrast again. Like a lot of this is about increasing contrast. So again, I'm going into the pink that I used earlier, putting that in this outer corner and then adding some of the ColourPop Hot to Touch blush and putting that in the outermost corner. So that's most of it for the top eyelid. And now the bottom part is actually really important for Douyin looks too. Now we have to make our Ego style pop or it's what's hen in Chinese. So I'm gonna take this really light pinky shade. You wanna take like a type of matte highlighting shade, one that's lighter than your skin tone. And I'm just gonna pop that in this like fattest part of my eye, like right here. So this is literally like acting as a matte highlight and it's making that under eye fat like pop out in like a cute way. It's a very like popular Asian trend thing because it kind of makes your eyes look like they're always smiling because when you smile, like your under eye fat gets accentuated. I'm calling it the fat instead of the eye bags because it's different than dark circles, which are like down here, but your under eye fat is like higher and it's like poofy. You see like when I smile, it's like poofing up. So yeah, that's the part that we want to accentuate. Okay, and actually I think that that was not like highlighter enough. So I'm actually gonna go back into this concealer. Just use whatever like is a good brightening shade for you. And also this will act as a base for some glitters that I'm gonna put on later. But yeah, so a lot of people, they'll actually just leave this matte highlight like by itself. And it looks the most natural that way, I guess. I'm not really gonna do that because I like glitter. Okay, now I'm gonna take some of this Peri Para Sugar Twinkle Liquid Glitter. This is more of like a chunky liquid glitter. Like it has bigger pieces. You can see the glitter chunks. I'm just gonna put that just all over this under eye, really make it pop. So I really like this because it just adds like the chunky glitters. And yeah, it gives it like a K-pop idol effect. Even though we're doing like a more Douyin eye look, but I like to mix different influences. Then you want to take like a contouring shade. So I'm going to use this kind of cool gray shade in this palette. You can use any shade though. That's like a contour for your skin tone. And then you want to like carve out the under eye fat. So you know how like we highlighted and now we have to like contour the under eye bag. I like to be really careful with this. Like I don't like to over contour it because some people make it really dark, like make this line super dark, which I think looks super unnatural. So personally, I like try to keep it as natural as possible. Do you want to use like a shade that's really close to your skin tone, but just like a shade or two deeper, you know? That's the shade that I used here. And then taking some more of the pink shade, and I'm just going to outline this part. And actually I'm going like horizontal to my eye. So I'm not like following the curve up on the bottom part. I'm just like pulling it out horizontally. This is something I noticed like a lot of Douyin people do. I'm taking a little bit of the contour shade and adding that there too. Cause we're starting to like deepen this part to add some more definition. But yeah, like they just leave this part open. They don't connect the bottom lash line to the top. Okay, actually I think I wanna add some of this Fenty Diamond Balm. This is like a clear white glitter. I'm gonna pop that in the center to really like brighten it because they actually like a really bright like inner corner. And then they also like highlight the nose with this type of white glitter. I'm gonna skip that today because I actually have to go out later and I don't wanna like go out looking super glittery. Like I'm fine with the eyes all glittery, but like I don't want like glitter cheeks and glitter nose when I go out for like a regular day. Like today is not the vibe for that. Anyways, now I'm gonna take this Clio gel liner that I got. This is their Extreme Gel Presso liner. And this is in the shade Black Brown. So I actually like that it's not super black. And I'm just gonna tight line with this. It's actually like a super nice gel consistency. Like it's very, very creamy. I'm just gonna blend this out with a separate brush. Also, yeah, I rarely use liner, but we're gonna put on some fake lashes today. And I think fake lashes generally look better with some kind of liner. So yeah, I just like blended that out. I'm gonna use this deep brown shade in the palette. And we're gonna use that to like blend out the eyeliner shade. This is a super popular Asian technique as well. It just makes the eyeliner a lot less harsh, but you still get that color intensity from the like gel or liquid liner that you used. But then you blend out the edges with like this darker shadow shade and it just makes everything kind of mesh together better. 
And then I'm also doing like a little mini liner moment on the bottom lash line. And as I said before, it's more of like a horizontal line. You want to leave like a gap between the two. Some people make this line really dramatic, but I'm just going to leave it like as a pretty natural looking kind of definition rather than like a legit bottom liner. But some people like the bottom liner look. But you can see how that like added that definition and kind of pulled my eyes out. Okay, so then I'm taking the really light pink shade and I'm just putting that right in between the two kind of liner moments that we did just to like brighten that part. Or it kind of like cleans it up too between the two liners so that they don't like mesh together. So yeah, that's it for this eye. Okay, so now we're gonna do the manhwa lashes, which is probably like the most important part of this look. So first you wanna curl your lashes like normal. So I'm just gonna curl them. And I use this Shiseido lash curler. I just wanna make sure like they're all like up because my lashes go straight down. Also I curl the lashes with my mini curler just to make sure I get like every single lash. But yeah, so that's what my lashes look like just curled. Now we're gonna take our lash individuals. So I love these ones from Ivy Poppy May. They're like a small business. And this is like a lash glossary. So they have like a bunch of different types of lashes. But today I think I'm gonna go for these chunky ones because you want like these really PC types of lashes. You don't want like it to be feathery. You could also use these A-shaped ones, but I actually found these kind of chunky types are easier to use just because if the base is longer than like the a shape or the i shape ones you see how these i shapes ones like you only have that much space to like work with it whereas at least the chunky ones the base is much wider so i prefer these types but yeah it's kind of up to you the most important thing is that it's like spiky and long so i'm just taking this lash glue and then i usually just put it on the back of my hand but you can put it wherever and then you want to take the middle lash piece so then i just like get some glue on the middle lash piece on the base like so and yeah i prefer tweezers for this because it just makes it a lot easier and you want to let it like dry a little bit so that it gets tacky which takes like i don't know 30 seconds and yeah i always start from the middle that's gonna be the most helpful since you're gonna base the rest of the lashes off of the middle lash so like you literally just want to put it kind of like in the center of your eye i would say like a little bit on the outside of your pupil so i'm placing it under my lash I just find that the easiest for me. And you can see how like that just stuck on like that. And also like when you put it under, it's a lot more invisible. So now I'm just going to do the rest of it. I literally do the same thing. So yeah, you want to place the second one like a little bit of a gap away. You don't want it to be like right next to each other. And it just like sticks right on. And I'm taking like a shorter lash and putting that on the very inner corner. And I realize that you can actually like still maneuver the lashes like when they're drying. So like if it's not exactly in the right direction or something, you can just like kind of push it around until it's exactly how you want it. So yeah, I tend to like five spikes. We could also do three spikes, but I just want like one center one and then like a few spikes around it depending on your eye size and everything so that's what it looks like with just the lashes on and then to make it more like natural i do usually add mascara so i'm using this romand one and then i usually just like mascara the lashes in between so this kind of depends on your natural lashes but i feel like my natural ones are kind of long enough to act as like the in-between lashes but i think some people like if you don't really have that many lashes you might also want to put some in between like lighter pieces Usually fishtail pieces are the way to go, but I'm too lazy to add like more pieces, you know? So yeah, I'm just like kind of brushing the mascara through. And this just really like melds your natural lashes with the falsies. So they really look like one. Also, this is good because it helps keep your natural lashes curled, especially if you have straight lashes like me. Otherwise the in-between lashes are just gonna fall down. So we have to like keep them up. I'm also kind of squeezing the clumps back together because when I use the mascara, it kind of made them like feather out so i'm kind of like clumping them back together okay and then i'm just adding a little bit of mascara on my bottom lashes out here but to be honest i don't really like bottom lash mascara so i'm not like applying too much of that okay so that's one eye all done so now i'm gonna go off camera to finish up the other eye i'm doing the exact same thing again and then i'll come back to do the rest of the face Okay, so now I'm back with the eyes all done, and you can see it's literally the perfect Doin eye look. I also want to briefly talk about the contacts that I use. So honestly, besides the manhwa lashes, the second most important thing for the Doin eye look is literally your contacts. I used to not wear contacts, but honestly, ever since I started wearing colored contacts, they definitely like level up my makeup so much. And it's like an easy step because they're not actually like doing makeup, you just like pop something in your eye. So some of the ones I use the most right now are the Olens ones, like the ones I used today. These are the Cherry Moon Brown ones. 
So these ones I've been using recently, like the past month or so, as like my daily go-to lens. Because as you can see, they're still brown and they're very natural, but they're a little bit lighter than my natural eye color. And I also like that they're like an enlarging lens. This one, the graphic diameter is 13.2 millimeters, which if you know, like for lenses, I feel like usually 13 and up is kind of like enlarging, but I really like a low 13 lens. So 13 to like 13.3 is like a good enlarging lens for me. So this is within that range. And one of the reasons why I specifically like this cherry moon brown one is because it has like this crescent moon shape that's like a highlight in the eye. Hopefully you guys can see it's like on both my eyes. So it literally looks like there's like a light shining on your eyes, but it's like at all times. You know, like when the light kind of reflects into your eyes and just makes you look like extra beautiful and glowy. It's such a pretty like highlight in the eyes and it's very natural. So I actually like this one better than the highlighter glowy ones because it's a little bit more like subdued of a highlight. And I also like the cherry moon gray ones as well. I think this is a really cute like everyday kind of moment and also like kind of gives me doe eyes. But I actually think I want to go for a more like cool tone route with this look since I'm doing like cool tone pinks today. And I feel like cool tone lenses make me look cooler and it actually like changes my eye color. So I'm going to go put those on right now and then come back and show you guys. Okay, so now I'm back with the cool tone lenses in. And you can see like how much that made a difference, right? Like I think it just like really pulls this look together. And this one's almost like more natural in a way. So this is the Olens Double Tint Gray. And it's been my favorite cool tone lens recently. This is like a newer lens that Olens came out with. It has like two crescent moon highlights that I was talking about earlier. Okay, I just zoomed you guys in all the way. But yeah, you can see how there's like a crescent moon on top and on the bottom. And I like that because that way like it doesn't matter whichever like way it rotates. There's always one on the top and the one on the bottom. It lives up to its name because it's called a tint lens. And it literally just gives my eyes like this lighter grayish blue tint, but it's not like crazy, you know, like it's not giving me like literally blue eyes, but it's giving this like grayish tint to them, which just matches like cool tone looks better. So I like to match my lenses to the look. If I'm going for a warmer tone look, I like a warmer tone lens. You could do like a brown or a green or a hazel. For like a cooler tone look, I like more grays, blues, etc. But you might think that like grays and blues look unnatural on brown eyes, like dark brown eyes, but they actually look really natural, especially with these O-Lens contacts. Like I really like how my eyes look with the gray contacts, I feel like. So that just shows you like how much the contacts like really elevate the look. And it's definitely a necessity for the Douyin eye looks. So yeah, definitely look into Olens contacts. I was not paid to say this, but they do gift me contacts. I used to buy their contacts before they started gifting me contacts anyways. So I would have bought it with my own money anyways, but just to be super transparent. And I also have a discount code, Stacey Chen, if you want to save some money on Olens. I don't think I make a commission from it. It's just like a discount code for you guys. So yeah, feel free to use that. So now let's get on to the rest of the face. Okay, so I would say the third most important thing for a Douyin makeup look is the blush. Not me like ranking the importance of these, but I feel like like the blush is super iconic. So first I'm going to a really pale pink blush. So I'm going to use this one from Flower Nose. I've used other Flower Nose blushes, but I haven't dug into this one yet called 03 Sakura Avenue from their Unicorn Collection and also this outer packaging as well. Like Flower Nose just cannot be beat. If you love a feminine, like ethereal type of aesthetic, like you need to check out Flower Nose. And yeah, they're really popular on Douyin as well. Also, this is not sponsored by Flower Nose. But anyways, I'm just going to take that and we're going to lightly put that like kind of on the ball of my cheek right here. So usually they tend to make it like very towards the front. So this, they're never like putting blush back here that much. It's very much like in this front plane of their face. It's also very up high, like basically like into your under eye and into your eyeshadow. And they like to put it in like a very like circular area. It's just like a very cute look. So yeah, also this like the super pale blush is really popular in Asia. As you can see, it's like very light. But it's like so cute and like innocent and fresh looking. And especially if you have like a fair skin tone, you know it's really hard to find like blushes that are really light and fresh looking. Most Western blushes are very like pigmented and a little bit deeper, which you know is great for deeper skin tones. But if you have a light skin tone, I feel like it's not the most flattering all the time. So definitely look for these more like pastel blushes. Like just look at that. It looks like I barely added anything, but it makes like such a big difference, I feel like. And this is my first time using this shade, but this is beautiful. This might be one of my favorite Flower Nose blush shades. And it's also like not actually that cool tone. It's just, it's more like a baby pink, but it's not like a lavender-y pink, which a lot of like lighter pink blushes are. So if you don't like that like lavender undertone, you might like this one because it's just like a perfect baby pink. Oh my gosh. Like a little ballerina pink. I'm actually obsessed right now. And also they like to put it on their nose as well. And you could stop here if you want like a more pure innocent vibe. I think it'd be very cute for like a first date kind of look. And also I think the camera is washing it out. Like it is a little bit more like pink in person. Whereas I feel like it's just looking kind of whitish on camera. But now we're going to go into the ColourPop blush in the shade Hot to Touch. So this is like their Dior Pink dupe. But I just love the heart packaging, perfect for Valentine's Day. You know I had to add something like heart themed in today's look. So we're just going to use this to kind of amp up the blush a little bit. And for the concentrated part, you kind of want it to be like 
under like right under your eye but more towards the outer area like, so on the outer half of your eye like you don't really want it to be like too close inwards just because i don't know i feel like it probably like pulls your face inwards in a weird way so like right under the eye and like in the center of your previous blush placement i feel like is the cutest and this is also why i didn't powder before putting on the blush because then the blush has like something to actually stick to, which is your foundation. But yeah, it helps make the blush more pigmented, especially when you're using like lighter shades. So you don't have to like add as much and layer it up as much. And then it doesn't get like cakey or powdery or anything. I also think the really under eye placement like helps it blend into the eyeshadow more. And that's like very popular in Douyin makeup where like the blush is kind of like a part of the eyeshadow almost. And it gives you like this very like flushed kind of appearance. Almost like you've kind of been crying. I feel like a lot of like Asian beauty kind of likes to focus on that teary eyed effect. Like that's why we add like the little glitters on the bottom too. So like because it's like the blush is like so high up, it kind of looks like you're crying, but in a good way. So anyways, I'm finally gonna add some powder because we have to powder this face. So I'm just gonna take my Huda Beauty powder and I finally got these powder puffs that everyone's been using. I just got it off of Amazon. And I have to say, I actually think it does make a difference compared to, I, I was using a beauty blender before. I think it actually like really makes the powder like sink deep into your skin and just like literally erases all of your pores. Like you can see that, right? Like how it's just like, it's literally looks like I photoshopped, but like in real life. Like I do think this triangle puff makes a difference. I will say though, I feel like it does, because it makes the powder like really sink in, I think you can use less powder. Cause at first I kind of used the same amount and I felt like it was like a little bit too dry almost. It like really mattifies it. Like, can you guys see a single pore on my face? I think not. Like you could see some earlier, I feel like. If you have a deeper skin tone, obviously like you might not want to use this kind of shade. Like if you have a really deep skin tone, even this shade might actually be more pastel on you. Cause this actually has some white in it even though it doesn't look like it but you can tell it actually does have some pastel quality to it so i feel like yeah if you're like really deep you might use a shade like this or something but just like cater it to your skin tone where it's like very pastel looking on your skin and i think that makes like the perfect doing blush look okay so now onto the lips i'm actually gonna like cover them in whatever foundation i have left like that's a very popular asian beauty thing and then i'm gonna overline a little bit But yeah, like by contouring, it literally makes my lips look like twice their size. And then I like to use a base lip color. You want to take like a really light base color. So I'm taking this 3CE soft matte lipstick and this is in the shade Pale Posy. And this is like a light pink. Cause it's actually hard to find pinks that are like this cool tone. And it's not like neon either. Like not like the Nicki Minaj lip kind of vibe. But like this is very pale and cool tone. I like using a really thin soft matte formula as a base lip. Just cause like it's not adding too much like texture or stuff to your lips because we're gonna layer another thing on top. So this is one of my favorite glossy lip tints of all time. This is the Peri Peri Ink Mood Glowy Tint, and this is in the shade 07. Um, I forget what the English name is, because it doesn't say on it. It's from their Twiggo Seam collection. But I also like all the colors in the line. Like I have all of the colors in this Ink Mood Glowy Tint line. And this is like one of the best like moisturizing glossy lip tint formulas. Like my lips never get dry with this one, and my lips get dry with like most things, so. And this is also a really unique shade because it's a light like cool baby pink but also it deepens like a little bit after it looked really light when i was first putting it on but now you can see it kind of deepen a little so yeah it's like not that crazy but that's actually why putting a base lip is really important first because since these glossy lip tints are kind of like translucent it shows your lip color underneath so it's better if you cover up your natural lip color with like the base lip color that's usually a light shade for your lips just because like your natural lip color if it's like really pigmented or even if it's like mine where it's not pigmented but it's more like brownish muted it can kind of like dull down colors like this and make it not look so like pure and fresh looking so that's why i highly recommend putting a base lip color especially if you're going for like a light lip look but of course we need to do a more like gradient lip moment so i'm gonna go in with this other peri para ink mood glowy tint from the trigo Shim collection and this is the 08 one i think this is limited edition so i don't i'm not sure if it's still up honestly any of the cool tone shades from the ink mood glowy tint line would work for this since this shade is a bit brighter i'm just putting it in the center okay so that's about this look all done i actually really love how this look turned out i think it's the perfect like valentine's day love inspired doin eye look but yeah you can really see how i feel like the iconic parts of this look are like the cut crease the blush the manhua lashes of course and then the contacts like i was just looking at myself in the mirror and the contacts are literally like so pretty i feel like they're even more pretty 
in person because it gives my eyes like this ethereal look to them. So anyways, that's it for the look today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget that everything is linked down below as always. I hope you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day. I will be having a date with myself. So if you're in the single club, I feel you, but we can do cute Valentine's Day looks and practice self-love. So anyways, I thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and comment and subscribe down below if you want to see more content like this because it really helps on my channel and it would really mean a lot to me and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.